Well, the war on police continues to rage on. The war on cops is real. War has been declared on the American police officer. We are sick and tired of having targets on our back. A lot of people were out to make the cops look bad. We are sick and tired of having dirt bags trying to take our lives. It's a scary time to be a cop right now. We're allowing our protectors to be hurt, and we are not protecting them. A target on the back of our law enforcement. In 2018, we've had 22 officer deaths already. Enough is enough. And if you're the ones that are out there spreading the rhetoric that police officers are the enemy, well, just know we've all got your number now. We're going to be keeping track of all of y'all, and we're going to make sure that we hold you accountable every time you stir the pot on our police officers. Despite the strength and pervasiveness of the war on cops narrative, which has been pushed for so long now that it's simply accepted as reality among some partisan factions, it's easily debunkable by looking at data from the FBI, which is provided directly by police officers for the annual law enforcement killed and assaulted report by the Uniform Crime Reporting Program. First, Let's look at 2018. According to the FBI, 55 police officers were feloniously killed. Sounds scary, like people are directly targeting police officers simply because they're police officers. But let's look at the details. Though 55 officers were feloniously killed, only a fraction of them were killed by people actively plotting to take their lives. Most officers were just caught in the crossfire of doing the jobs they voluntarily signed up to do, not victims in a conspiratorial war against their very job title. Nevertheless, some cops were directly targeted and died as a result. 11 were ambushed, one was killed in an unprovoked attack, and six died in tactical situations. Information on whether these tactical situations were intentionally instigated to target police officers isn't clear, so I am generously counting all tactical situations as intentionally targeting them to avoid underestimating. So in 2018, at most 18 police officers were murdered by people who expressly intended to kill them, as opposed to acting in the heat of the moment during run-ins with the law. In the same year, 51 died in accidents. Among them, 34 were killed in car accidents, and another nine pedestrian officers were accidentally struck by vehicles, totaling 43 cops killed by cars. This is more than double the number of police who were intentionally murdered. Preliminary data for 2019 suggests the numbers for this year are even lower. 33 officers have been feloniously killed as of October 1st, compared to 45 for the same time period last year. This sounds like a pretty ineffective war against police, but maybe it's just a lull amid many other years of overwhelming attacks. Except taking the averages from previous years, 2017 back to 2014, when the war on cops narrative gained ground amid protests against police brutality and police murders of unarmed people, shows just how consistently car accident deaths outnumber war on cops fatalities. Between these years, on average 16.5 officers per year died in direct, targeted attacks, while 37.25 died in car-related accidents. Now, taking into account all officers feloniously killed, not just directly targeted for the years we addressed, it's an average of 52 total between 2014 and 2018. By comparison, between 1987 and 1996, cops were killed at an average total of 77 per year, higher than every year we just covered. And in 1996, they were at the lowest they'd been in 20 years, yet still significantly higher than today. When taking a more recent nine-year view, the difference is even greater, with an average of 50.5 officers feloniously killed per year between 2009 and 2018. That's 35% lower than the 1987 to 1996 timeframe. As a recent research paper in the peer-reviewed Journal of Criminology and Public Policy concluded, the number of line of duty deaths has declined dramatically over the last five decades. Policing is a much safer profession now than it was 50 years ago. Though the numbers for murder may be low, many more officers are assaulted every year, which must indicate a war on police, right? Except the numbers for 2017 show that 60,211 officers were assaulted, a seemingly high number. Of those, 17,460, or 29%, claimed injury. Of those 17,460, 14,797, a massive 84.7%, were allegedly injured by personal weapons, meaning hands, feet, and other body parts. AKA the perpetrators were unarmed, or if they had weapons, chose not to use them. In fact, officers were three times as likely to claim injury when assaulted by personal weapons than firearms. 10.2% versus 32%, and twice as likely to be injured than if they were attacked with a knife, 14.1% versus 32%. Also keep in mind, this is data reported by the police themselves. And police have been known to claim they're being assaulted or their lives are in danger even when video evidence contradicts them. Despite the data, the war on cops narrative remains true to many people. But the real war on cops, many police advocates and pundits decry, isn't a war on officers and has little to do with instances of violence against them we see in the news. 
The real war on police is a war on blind subservience to political authority and the law cops enforce, a mentality that has enabled some of the most staggering abuses against humanity. It's a war on the notion that because a human being has a uniform and a badge and a government gun, we must do whatever they say or literally face death because they work for the state. I don't condone killing police officers, and in fact, I think doing so undermines the greater war on political authority, which is inherently violent as cops demonstrate in their day-to-day -day enforcement of politicians' laws. But rest assured that those who fear a war on cops are terrified not only of police officers dying, but also, and more so, of shattering their illusion that government and its levers of control keep them safe and maintain order in American society. An illusion that remains powerful despite volumes of evidence to the contrary, and the countless cases of police abuse against even citizens trying to comply, and despite police apologists' own beliefs that they're anti-government. It's this exact mentality that has emboldened law enforcement to get drunk on power and abuse the public they're supposed to serve. If you want to flare up the real war even more, the one on subservience to government authority, which has proven catastrophic for humanity throughout the history of the world, you need only dig in your heels further, demand more compliance, more obedience, more submission, and support the violent enforcers even more to demonstrate the absurdity and inhumanity that comes from trusting the state.